pastors, seminarians, and saints who came to attend the Shincheonji online seminar of Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. Welcome. I am moderator Yi Hyunwoo of the Simon Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I would like to thank everyone who came to the Shincheonji online seminar, which is being broadcasted around the world. The seminar that is currently running contains the content given by Jesus to all the believers of the world, which they need to know in order to keep the new covenant. I hope that all who have attended from every nation of the world will have a precious time filled with much grace and realization. First, we will pray with the same heart and start the seminar. Most precious Father God, who is the Lord of all creation, of the heavens and earth, Father, today we thank you so much for proclaiming the word of revelation of the Old and New Testaments today. Please grant the pastors and saints who listen to the word of revelation with much understanding, and also allow the instructor who will deliver the message today, the lips of wisdom. All these words we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We would like to inform you that this online seminar is being conducted in strict compliance with quarantine rules and social distancing. Now is the most important time to listen to the Word of Life. Shincheonji Church has already testified to all of the verses in Revelation from chapters 1 to 22 through YouTube and following the words of Revelation, numerous believers have come out to God's word of truth. Today, Instructor Yi jung of the Simon Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony, will give the word on the true meaning of the Lord's Prayer. I pray that you will have the time to keep the word of testimony in your heart and perceive it verse by verse. We will have instructor Yi jung Pastors, seminarians, and saints from all over the world who wish for heaven and eternal life, it is nice to meet you. I am the head of Seodaemun Church of the Simon Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. My name is Yi jung I sincerely welcome you and thank you for coming to the Shincheonji online seminar, the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. The title of the word that will be shared today is Lesson 7, The True Meaning of the Lord's Prayer. The main reference is Matthew chapter 6, and we will also look at the contents of John chapter 8. While you listen to this, I would appreciate if you would think about why it is important for believers to know the true meaning of the Lord's Prayer and how these words relate to us believers today. Of course, there may be some of you pastors who know this content and some who may not, but I would be grateful if you would listen to my explanation once more through this time today. Let me introduce the main reference for today. The Gospel of Matthew was recorded approximately 2,000 years ago by Matthew, one of Jesus' twelve disciples. The Lord's Prayer recorded in Matthew chapter 6 contains the promises that will be fulfilled in the future so that when the time comes, it will be fulfilled. The time of the fulfillment is at the fulfillment of the New Covenant, Revelation, which is a time of the Lord's second coming. Many people recite the Lord's Prayer as a habit, but if the Lord's Prayer contains promises to be fulfilled at the time of the Lord's return, then shouldn't we, 
who live at the time of the Lord's return know about this. Everyone, you who are listening to these words, do you know the true meaning that God has put in the Lord's prayer? If you just pray without knowing its meaning, it will not do any good to you. Then now, we will take a look at the true meaning of the Lord's Prayer one by one. Let's read Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13 together. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, as you have read, the Lord's Prayer begins with saying, Our Father in heaven. Then, where is this heaven where God is? Of course, it is not talking about the sky that is up there, right? Because God is the Most High, the place where God is is expressed as heaven. So it does not matter where God is. Wherever God is, that place becomes heaven. But as we have seen in Revelation chapter 4, we know that God, who is spirit, resides in heaven of the spiritual world. Therefore, the heaven that is mentioned in the Lord's Prayer refers to the heaven of the spiritual world where God's throne is. Next, let's look at the phrase, Our Father. Our Father in heaven is God, who is Spirit. Just as every person has physical parents who gave birth to them, God is the Father of our spirit. But just because we call God as Father does not make Him our Father. For example, if we grab someone, just anyone on the street, and we call them as Father, Father, wouldn't that person be taken aback? In the same way, there are qualifications to call God as our Father, and we need them in order to call Him as our Father. In the world, when children are born with the seed of their father, they become His children and they can call Him as their Father. And in order to call God as our Father, we must also be born of God's seed. What is this seed of God? If we go to Luke chapter 8, verse 11, we can see that the seed of God means the Word of God. Therefore, only those who have the Word of God can call God as Father. But there is something that we need to think carefully about. When it comes to the spiritual seed, there is the seed of God, but on the other side, there is also the devil's seed. Depending on which seed that you have out of these two seeds, the result will be vastly different. Let's see what happened at the first coming by reading today's reference, John chapter 8, verses 41 to 44. You are doing the things your own father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and now am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yes, as you have read, the Jews at that time were the people who called God as their father. Despite that, 
Jesus said to them that their father was actually the devil. When the Jews heard this at that time, how much would they have been offended by those words? However, Jesus had no choice but to say this, and the reason was because they had no truth in them, which was a seed of God, and that because they were lying. At that time, the pastors or the shepherds of the traditional churches in Jerusalem who claimed that they were good believers of God did not even know the true meaning of the law, but they blindly thought that the law was the best. But Jesus, who was a son of God, came to this earth not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So he had taught the free law and he had testified to the truth. However, they persecuted and even killed Jesus because what Jesus said was different from the laws that they had kept until then. So there was religious conflict of persecuting and being persecuted at the time. As such, the Jews at that time did not accept the truth and only persecuted. So seeing their actions, we can tell that they were the children of the devil born of the seed of the devil, no matter how much they called God as their father. If we also go to Matthew chapter 13, two types of spiritual seeds were sown into one field, and as a result, two types of sons appear. At this time, the field where the two kinds of seeds were sown is the field of Jesus, and Jesus had sown the good seeds, So it means that both God's seed and the devil's seed, they were sown within the church of Jesus where the believers of Jesus were gathered. Today, all believers in Jesus call God as their father. But there are those born of the seed of the devil among them, and this is a very big problem. Those born of the good seed, which is the seed of God, become the sons of the kingdom of heaven, but those born of the weeds become the sons of the evil one, in other words, the children of the devil. Not only that, it is also promised that those born of God's seed will shine like the sun in the kingdom of heaven, and that those born of the devil's seed will be thrown into the furnace, meaning that they will eventually be thrown into hell. Now, when and how will those born of these two kinds of seeds be recognized? First, the time that we can recognize them is a time of the harvest, which is the end of the world. Before the harvest time, they were in the same field, in one field, But when the harvest time comes, the wheat and the weeds are separated. Then, how can you know at that time? It is by distinguishing between those who have been harvested and those who have not been harvested. Those born of God's seed are harvested and go to the heavenly barn, while those born of the devil's seed remain in the field without being harvested and they become burned. Furthermore, we can see in Revelation chapter 7 that those who are harvested are sealed by God's word and belong to the 12 tribes of the kingdom of God which is newly created. Therefore, those who are able to call God as their father at the time of the second coming of the Lord are only those who are born of God's seed harvested and sealed and belong to the 12 tribes of God's new kingdom and new people. However, even today, just as it was at the time of the first coming, those who are not harvested persecute those who are harvested. It is the same kind of religious conflict as we've seen in John chapter 8, which takes place at the Lord's second coming. Even though one calls God as their father, at the time of the harvest, if they only do the work of persecution and they are not harvested, it is without a doubt that they are the children of the devil born of the devil's seed. Then shouldn't I myself reflect upon whether I am truly a person born of God's seed or not, and whether I have been harvested or not? And even now, 
we must become the believers who meet the exact qualifications to be able to call God as our Father. Next, let's look at Your Kingdom Come. This is very important. Should we not know what is the kingdom that comes and when and to where it comes as well as what it has to do with me? To give the answer first, the kingdom that is to come as expressed here is a kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world, the holy city, New Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 21. As seen in Genesis, God was originally with the people who He had created in His image and likeness here on this earth. However, Adam and Eve had sinned due to the serpent's deception, and their descendants continued to sin, and so God had to leave this earth. From then on, God became the God in that far heaven. Since then, this world has become a world that was ruled by the devil. However, the will of God who had left was to restore this land and to return to it. For this purpose, He had sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, 2,000 years ago, and God and the kingdom of heaven had come to Jesus. But the Jews of that time did not recognize Jesus, but rather crucified Him on the cross. And so the kingdom of God had no choice but to leave again. However, we can see in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, that Jesus gave a promise to His disciples before He left that He must go and prepare a place and that when that place is ready, He would return to this earth again. The place that Jesus has prepared in heaven according to this promise is the holy city, New Jerusalem, mentioned in Revelation chapter 21. The reason why this place is called as a New Jerusalem is that it is different from the Jerusalem that Moses had seen from heaven during his time, and that is why it is called as a New Jerusalem. This is the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world that Jesus established through the twelve disciples who became martyred, and they were the twelve cornerstones. Jesus promised that when this place is prepared, He will come to the earth with this dwelling. So the kingdom that will come in the Lord's Prayer, as mentioned, is the heavenly kingdom of the spiritual world, the holy city, New Jerusalem. Then, when and to whom will this kingdom come to? Let's read the words of Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 2. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Yes, as you have read, the heavenly kingdom of the spiritual world, the holy city, New Jerusalem, is promised to come to the new heaven and new earth, which is Shincheonji. Also, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, it is promised that it will come upon the one who overcomes. Therefore, the one who overcomes, who is promised that the heavenly kingdom will be with, is the one who we must meet today, the promised pastor or shepherd of the New Testament. There is also one more important verse. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, we can see that Jesus comes in the last days and separates all the nations as the sheep are separated from the goats. And He promised to give the kingdom that was prepared since the creation of the world to the sheep-like believers as an inheritance. This kingdom prepared since the creation of the world is the holy city, New Jerusalem, that Jesus has prepared. Therefore, the very place where the sheep-like believers are gathered is going to be where the holy city, New Jerusalem, that Jesus has prepared will come down upon. 
To summarize once again, the place where God's kingdom comes down to is new heaven, new earth, Shincheonji, where the one who overcomes is. And only when you become a sheep-like believer can you partake in the kingdom of God that it descends upon. Next is, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is also very, very important. In order for God, who has left because of the sins on this earth, to return back to this earth, the kingdom of God, which is created as it is on this earth as shown in heaven, this spiritual kingdom of heaven must appear. This has been happening since the time of Moses. As seen in Exodus chapter 25, Moses saw the things in heaven and built a tabernacle for God to dwell in here on this earth. However, it is said that this tabernacle in the days of Moses was not the reality, but that it was a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven. If so, when will this reality appear? At that time, it will appear on this earth through the works of the first and the second coming. We can see from John chapter 5, verse 19, that at the time of the first coming, Jesus said that He also saw what the God in heaven was doing and that He did the same things here on this earth. Likewise, even at the second coming today, God and Jesus choose the promised pastor or shepherd of the New Testament and show the heaven of the spiritual realm, the holy city in New Jerusalem, and make Him to build this new heaven and new earth, Shincheonji, as it was seen from heaven. When this new heaven and new earth is completed, God who had left, as well as the kingdom of heaven, will come down to the people of the new heaven and new earth. So this new heaven, new earth, becomes the heaven where the spirit and the flesh become one, and these people in new heaven and new earth will be able to enter into the eternal rest. It is for this very purpose that God has been working for 6,000 years. The promised pastor of Shincheonji is the witness who was chosen by Jesus and has seen and heard how Jesus fulfills the New Testament revelation. In addition, he is the one who has seen himself the appearance of the spiritual world as mentioned in Revelation chapters 4 and 21. Because of this, the 12 tribes of Shincheonji created on this earth as it is in heaven is the kingdom of God that was created according to the New Covenant revelation. The creation of Shincheonji was done as if it was stamped with a seal that the entire chapters of the book of Revelation in the New Testament were engraved and the organization, the names, the church name, and even all of these people's names were made according to the book of Revelation. I'm going to say it once again because this is so important. The 12 tribes of Shincheonji that has been created according to the New Covenant Revelation. The creation of Shincheonji was done as if it was stamped with a seal that the entire chapters of the book of Revelation in the New Testament were engraved, and the organization, the names, the church name, and even people's names were also made according to the book of Revelation. Furthermore, Shincheonji is the new kingdom and new people that has been created according to the promise of the book of Revelation, and it is the promised kingdom, the promised people. In this way, if the kingdom of God that has been made on earth as it is in heaven has appeared, shouldn't we welcome it and confirm it if it is true instead of persecuting? I ask all of you who hear these words to open your hearts wide and to confirm it through the Bible. Next is, give us today our daily bread. In regards to the today that is referenced here, if we go to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 7, a certain day was set and called as today. 
Therefore, today in the main reference is referring to the time of the Lord's second coming when the prophecies of the New Testament are fulfilled. Then, what is the daily bread that we must seek for and eat at the time of the second coming? Today, many believers misunderstand this food to be a physical food eaten by the mouth. So in many cases, only the physical food is sought after. However, as we see in Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 to 32, Jesus said not to run after what to eat or what to drink, in other words, the physical food. Thus, we are able to tell that the kind of food that Jesus told us to seek for is not the physical food, but it is the spiritual food which is the Word of God. In order to know more about this daily bread, we need to know about the manna, which was a daily bread at the time of Moses. If you go to Exodus chapter 16, you can see that the Israelites who followed Moses had no food in the wilderness. And so God had given them this physical food, which was manna. At the time of Moses, this physical food, manna, was their daily bread. However, the daily bread that was to be eaten at the first coming was not the physical manna from the time of Moses. Jesus talked about manna at the time of Moses in John chapter 6, saying that the people in Moses' time died even though they had eaten the manna, but the food that God gives is the food that people may eat and not die. And Jesus said that He Himself was a living bread from heaven, that is, spiritual manna. He also said that we must eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus to gain eternal life. The reason is that, just as it was in the days of Moses, people ate the flesh of the Lamb to receive salvation, since Jesus was likened to a lamb. Jesus said that when we eat His flesh and drink His blood, that we would gain eternal life. If this is the case, doesn't it mean that if we do not eat the flesh and the blood of Jesus, that we would not have eternal life? If we go to John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 1, it is said that both God and Jesus are the Word. So we can tell that the flesh and the blood of Jesus are the words of Jesus that gives life to our souls. Furthermore, at the time of the first coming, Jesus was the one who testified to the revealed word of the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Therefore, the daily bread to be eaten at the time of the first coming was the revealed word of the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Now there is one more important point here. If you go to Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 20, you can see that Jesus made a new covenant with His disciples on the night of the Passover through His blood. The content of this new covenant is that we would not be able to eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus, that is, our daily bread, until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. In other words, when the kingdom of God is established, the flesh and blood of Jesus can be eaten again. Then, when would be the time when the flesh and blood of Jesus is eaten again? And where is the kingdom where it finds fulfillment? Also, who from where eats this food and receives salvation? We can find this answer only by going into the book of Revelation. Let's read Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 to 10. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Yes, as you have read, when the time comes to fulfill the book of Revelation, God's kingdom and priests who were purchased with the blood of Jesus appear. This kingdom in Revelation chapter 5 
is the kingdom of God that has appeared according to the new covenant. So this daily bread, the flesh and the blood of Jesus, can only be eaten when the time of Revelation's fulfillment comes. Also, in Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, it is said that the priests of this kingdom were freed from their sins by the blood of Jesus. Furthermore, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, there is a great multitude dressed in white who has washed their clothes in the blood of Jesus and they come out of the great tribulation. Therefore, we can see that the blood of Jesus that was shed 2,000 years ago is the blood of salvation for the priests and the great multitude in white of the 12 tribes of the kingdom of God that appears at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. Also, only these priests and the great multitude in white will be those who receive salvation by eating the flesh and blood of Jesus, which is the daily bread at the time of the second coming. Now, let's read Revelation chapter 2, verse 17 to have a better look at the daily bread that we must eat at the second coming. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. Yes, as you have read, Jesus said that He would give the hidden manna to the one who overcomes. This hidden manna will be our daily bread to eat at the time of the second coming. At the first coming, Jesus told the secrets of the kingdom of heaven of the New Testament by hiding it in parables. And He promised that when the time comes, he would speak plainly about his father without the parables. Therefore, since no one is able to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven that Jesus had spoken of in parables until the prophecies of the New Testament are fulfilled, these secrets of the kingdom of heaven that were hidden in parables are called as the hidden manna. However, when the time comes and the promises of the New Testament are fulfilled, the revealed word of the fulfillment of the New Testament gets to be testified. Therefore, the daily bread to eat at the time of the second coming is the hidden manna, the revealed word in which the New Testament is fulfilled. Because Jesus had promised to give this word to the one who overcomes, we must meet the promised pastor of this New Testament, the one who overcomes, to be able to eat the hidden manna, which is our daily bread. In Revelation chapter 10, the open scroll in heaven is given to the promised pastor, the new John, to eat. And he is commanded to prophesy again to many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. This open scroll was originally sealed with seven seals in the right hand of God in Revelation chapter 5. It was sealed with seven seals, so no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open it or to see inside. Jesus took the sealed scroll and opened the seals one by one in Revelation chapters 6 and 8, fulfilling what was recorded. At this time, the one who had seen and heard everything next to Jesus was the promised pastor, the new John. Jesus sent an angel to this new John so that he can eat this open scroll and commanded him to testify to the churches what he has seen and heard as we see in Revelation chapters 22 verse 8 and verse 16. Regarding this, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 to 47, there is a promise that the faithful and wise servant of Jesus will give the food at the proper time. This food at the proper time is that when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, the words of the entire book of Revelation becomes the food, 
And when the prophecy of Matthew chapter 24 is fulfilled, the words of Matthew chapter 24 becomes the food to be eaten at this time. Then, from whom should all pastors and believers on earth receive their daily bread from at the time of the second coming so that they can eat of it? We must know that we can eat this food only through the promised shepherd who has seen and heard the events of the entire book of Revelation. In this way, God gives His food to His people But on the other hand, Satan gives his food to his own people. Now let's move on to Satan's food and find out what it is. If we go to Revelation chapter 2, we see that Satan's Nicolaitans entered the tabernacle where the seven angels were appointed by Jesus and they fed them the food sacrificed to idols and made them commit adultery. At this time, the food sacrificed to idols is the falsehood of these false pastors, which in other words is Satan's food. Also, in Revelation chapter 13, Satan's pastors fight and overcome the saints of God's tabernacle. And the saints of the tabernacle worship Satan's pastors and receive the mark of the beast, so God's tabernacle is destroyed at this time. In this way, the seven angels whom Jesus had appointed and the saints eat Satan's food and worship Satan's pastors. But this is not the end of it. If you go to Revelation chapter 17 and 18, the prostitute who has the name of Babylon written on her forehead deceives all the nations with the wine of adultery and even makes them marry together with the demons. It means that all nations will be destroyed by this wine of adultery in the end. This is truly a horrible thing. At this time, this prostitute refers to the false pastor who receives Satan's seed and raises her children. And the wine of adultery that she gives is Satan's food and refers to the false pastor's words, their lies. Ultimately, it means that when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, all nations will be deceived by the lies and will be thrown into Babylon, the kingdom of demons. If so, shouldn't we look at ourselves and see what kind of food we are eating at this time? So I hope that you understand that in order to receive salvation, we must be able to discern between God's food and Satan's food, and that you can reach salvation only by eating the daily bread, by finding the promised pastor who gives God's food. This revealed word from the Shincheonji Online Seminar that you are currently listening to is the daily bread for the second coming that believers today must eat. It has testified to all the prophecies and the realities of the book of Revelation that have not been heard anywhere for 2,000 years and continues to the explanation of the parable of the secrets of heaven and even to the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. The promised pastor, Shinchenji, has never learned these words from anyone. But since he has seen and heard the prophecies of the New Testament and the events of Revelation fulfilled by Jesus, he is testifying to it just as he has witnessed. Furthermore, I would like you to know that he is preaching this message so that all believers around the world may listen to this word and enter the kingdom of heaven together. Now let's examine this next part. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. To understand this better, let's read Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 to 15. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Yes, as you have read, Jesus said that only when we forgive our brother's sins will God forgive 
our sins. So when we pray to God to forgive us of our sins, we must first forgive our brother's sins. Also, in the words of Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35, Jesus answered Peter's question, saying that we must forgive 77 times. Furthermore, he tells a parable about forgiveness. A king had lent a servant a large sum of 10,000 talents, but the servant could not repay it. But the king had pity on him and forgave him of that huge amount of money. However, the forgiven person went back and put a fellow servant in prison for not repaying a few pennies that were borrowed from him. Hearing this, the king was taken aback and called the servant he had forgiven and put him in prison until the servant paid all of the money back. This parable helps us to realize that we have been forgiven of our many sins by the blood of Jesus and that God cannot forgive our sins if we do not forgive one person who has sinned against us. Therefore, only by forgiving the sins of others can one's own sins be forgiven too. If we believe in God and Jesus and have faith in order to receive heaven and eternal life, I believe that we should stop persecuting and cursing and instead, we should love, forgive, and become one together in Jesus. Next, let us find out about this part, lead us not into temptation. In Matthew chapter 24, in which the time of the Lord's second coming is promised, it is prophesied that many people will turn away from the faith and hate one another. The reason for these things to happen is that, as you can see in the image here, the abomination that causes desolation belonging to Satan stands in the temple of God. So those in God's temple are deceived and turn away from the faith. Regarding this, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, it prophesizes that there will be an hour of trial, temptation, that is going to come upon the whole world. That is why we believers should pray that we may not fall into temptation and that we will not turn away from the faith. Next is, deliver us from the evil one. As mentioned just now, at the time of the Lord's second coming, the destroyer who destroys God's temple will appear. Therefore, this destroyer who destroys God's temple at the second coming will be the evil at the second coming. They are described as the beast with seven heads and ten horns in Revelation chapters 12 and 13, and in Revelation chapters 17 and 18, their kingdom is expressed as Babylon, the kingdom of demons. At the second coming, these evil destroyers will appear, so we should pray for deliverance from them. Now is the ending part. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. When will be the time when God's kingdom and power and glory are revealed? In Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 and afterwards, we see that after the judgment of Babylon, the kingdom of demons in Revelation chapter 18, that the era of God's reign begins, and a great multitude in heaven returns the glory shouting, Amen, Hallelujah. Therefore, the time of raising the kingdom, power, and glory must be at the time in which God reigns after judging Babylon, the kingdom of demons. In this world, for 6,000 years after Adam's sin, the kingdom, power, and glory of God has been taken away by Satan. Therefore, I believe that we should pray together and participate in God's work so that the kingdom of the devil will end soon and that the kingdom of God can be completed on this earth and all glory 
can return to God forever. Now, let us summarize today's word. Today's title was Intermediate Lesson 7, The True Meaning of the Lord's Prayer. In this Lord's Prayer, the promises to be fulfilled at the Lord's second coming are recorded, and it promises that His will will be fulfilled on earth as it is in heaven. What has been accomplished in heaven is the holy city, New Jerusalem. And the kingdom of God created on this earth today, as if it is stamped from what we had seen in heaven, is the twelve tribes of Shincheonji. As heaven and God come upon these twelve tribes of Shincheonji and are with them forever, the era of God's reign will finally come to fulfill. This is the purpose in which God has been working for for the past 6,000 years. Now is the era when the promised kingdom of God has been revealed. So I hope that we will not just recite the Lord's Prayer, but understand and realize the true meaning of this Lord's Prayer and put it into action in order to fulfill our hope of heaven. Now let me briefly introduce you to the next session. Next time, using Matthew chapter 8 as the main reference, we will look into the word about the subjects of the kingdom and those who take their places in the kingdom of heaven. This is lesson 8 of the intermediate curriculum. A lecturer who can deliver the message much better than I will testify this. Then, I hope that you will join us in the next time as well in eager anticipation. So let us all shout together today and finish. We are one in God and Jesus. We are one. Yes, let us pray briefly. Most holy and gracious Father God, we thank you very much for granting us the precious life today and for the grace of calling us in front of your word. Today, we have come to understand the revealed word of the fulfillment of this New Testament because you have sent the promised pastor in the midst of this earth. Today, we have come to understand the true meaning of the Lord's Prayer, which we have only been reciting with our lips for 2,000 years. So please, have all of your children be able to come to the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, the kingdom of God that has appeared on this earth as promised in the Lord's Prayer. Please open the hearts of each person who has heard these words today and allow them to be reborn anew through your words. I earnestly pray that you protect everyone who listens to these words until the end of these seminar series so that they can be spiritually and physically healthy. And I pray this in the name of our loving Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, thank you for listening until now. It is said that the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside from God's kingdom, and those who come from the east and the west will take their seat in the kingdom of heaven. What kind of entities are the subjects of the kingdom, and those from the east and the west, and when do they appear? And after the door of heaven is closed, they would stand outside and knock, saying, Sir, open the door for us. We ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. As you have seen in the video, in the next lesson, we will examine the subjects of the kingdom and those who take their places in the kingdom of heaven with the main reference of Matthew 8. The time is 10 a.m., the same as today. We hope that you will attend and come to understand the precious will of God and His promises. In addition to the message you heard today, if you have more questions or inquiries about the Shincheonji Church and its doctrine, please contact the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. We will be happy to guide you in detail. Then, by giving the Lord's Prayer together, we will conclude all the programs today. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This concludes the Shincheonji Online Seminar on Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. Thank you to everyone who joined us.